Hi everybody, welcome to this little mini class. Today we are going to be creating this Christmas tree. Now this is a quick tree, this is for beginners, this is nothing advanced, this should take you like one hour to do, uh, just one sitting, just something quick to pop up on your wall or a shelf. Um, just to spruce up your holidays this season if you don't have any decorations and you need something quick and you can do it yourself. So this is what you're going to need. A brush. If you're using a big canvas, you're probably going to need a bigger brush. I'm going to be using this 16 by 20 canvas. So I'm going to be using this two inch brush uh, to do my background um, blue. And then I'm just going to use two brushes two round brushes. Um, they're not big. One is kind of bigger, one is smaller. If you have other brushes, that's okay too. You can use a filbert or a flat brush as well. And I am going to be using a palette knife to mix my paints just because I'm used to mixing my paints with a palette knife. It's cleaner. You can just wipe it off. But if you don't have a palette knife, don't worry. You can just mix your colors with your brush. Um, and a palette. You can use disposable palette paper. You can use a glass like I have here that has a sheet of paper that's been painted gray on the underside. So if you want to do that, go ahead. I just found a piece of glass in my garage from like a, a screen door that was broken. It was just sitting there. So I washed it and thankfully the edges aren't sharp. So that's what I'm using for my palette. Um, and of course, jar of water and some paper towels. Now for the colors, we are going to be using a Liquitex brand heavy body acrylics. If you have anything cheaper, other brands, do whatever, use whatever you have. Don't spend a ton of money on this. This is supposed to be a quick little Christmas tree. This is not anything advanced, but this is what I have. And this is what I used for the original painting that I did. So I'm just trying to recreate it the same way. So I am going to be using a paints gray and a Prussian blue. Now make sure when you use a paints gray that it's actually gray because this one right here from Charvin is a lot bluer than my Liquitex paints gray. So if you don't have gray, you can obviously use black. Just use a teeny tiny bit of it because black is very strong. But test out your colors. See what you have um, and do a few test mixes and see what color you get. Now for the other colors, I'm just using a yellow, orange, and a green. It really doesn't matter which ones exactly you're using because it depends on what kind of look you're going for. Uh, we're not going to be using a lot of this orange either um, or the green. So if you don't have green, don't worry about it. You can make your green from your Prussian blue and a yellow. But I am using yellow light Hansa, a cadmium orange, or really any orange you have, don't worry about it. The orange is gonna be a very small part of this and a chromium oxide green. And of course, white. We're gonna be using a lot of white um, for the snowflakes and the highlights and all that kind of stuff. Um, so if you have transparent white, you can use that as well for the background for those little snow swishes that we're going to be doing but if you just have um, titanium white or any other white it'll work just fine because that's what i'm going to be using so that is pretty much it for the um, supplies that you need so the first thing we're going to do is mix our main background together which is prussian blue and paints gray so I'm just going to use a little bit of Prussian blue and a little bit of paints gray, basically like 50, 50 amounts of each. Uh, but again, like I said, it depends on your blue and your gray if you're using different colors. So make sure you do a little bit of a testing test strip first. Don't just start mixing a bunch of it in case it doesn't look right. But we're just going for a nice dark navy blue. Um, so as long as you get that kind of a color, you're good to go. Now I am going to be using this, um, medium because my Prussian blue is very old and it's a little dried out and it's going to be a little hard for me to spread it on the canvas. So I'm just using a little bit of this water mister to mist my canvas and that medium just to kind of water it down a little bit because my paint is so old. Um, now I recommend using the mister just to kind of spread out the paint a little bit easier. Don't soak your canvas, just mist it <laughs> just a tiny bit. So now I am going to mix my paints here and I'm going to do a little bit 
of a little swatch test here, as you can see, because I want to make sure that I get the correct color that I was looking to get. So this is the color that we're looking for. It's like a dark blue. Now we can always adjust it for the second layer because we're going to do this main layer twice. The first layer is just going to be very um, light. So don't put a ton of paint on there. That's why I misted it with water because we don't want to waste like a whole ton of paint on our background because it's just adding that subtle blue in the background. So once you do this, then we're going to apply a second coat and make it darker. So make sure the first coat is just a light little wash. Now I'm going to paint the edges of my painting just because I don't like it when it's just white like that. And I'm using kind of an old cheap canvas. I'm not using anything fancy. So my edges are kind of blah <laughs> and I'm just going to paint them this light blue just because I don't like them white. So if you don't want to do that, you don't have to, you can paint them black, you can paint them blue, whatever color you want. If you're going to be framing this, then you don't really have to worry about the edges. Okay, so after this first layer dries, give it a few minutes or use a hair dryer and like just dry it for a few minutes. But you can just, you know, go get lunch or something, leave it for like 10, 15 minutes, whatever, however thick you made it. Um, if you made it thick, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. But if you did a light wash, it only takes a few minutes for it to dry. And I'll come back in one second and keep going. All right, so now that I'm back and my first layer is dry, I'm going to mix more of the same exact color. You can get it a little bit darker if you want or adjust it however you need to. But since this first layer was such a light wash, the second layer, once we start applying more paint to get to the canvas, it's going to be darker naturally. So we don't need to add more like black or anything like that. Just make the same mixture. So again, I am adding some of that medium just to get it a little bit softer, like I said, because my paint is dry. If you don't have that, don't worry about it. You can add a tiny bit of water just to get it a little bit more flowy. But um, again, our second coat is again, it's not going to be super thick or anything. It's just going to cover a little bit more of this area that's showing white on the canvas. So make sure you kind of stay loose in this painting. Don't try to cover every little last square millimeter of this canvas. Just kind of do it loose and flowy and kind of abstract. So just keep that in mind that it's supposed to be loose and kind of quick. Yeah, just make it look a little bit messy. So just kind of hold your brush nice and softly and just kind of dance to it. Put some music on and make this background nice and um, just kind of messy and texturized. That's what I mean, like texture. And you can mix your um, or mist your canvas again with a little bit of water. If you're seeing that it's a little bit hard for you to spread this paint around, if it's a little thick and getting a little gunky and drying on you. Um, especially if you have like a heater in your room or air blowing, I have vents right above my head. So it's always blowing hot air down right onto my painting. So my paint always dries super quickly. Um, so just, um, spritz it with a little bit of water. All right, so I have most of my blue down and I'm pretty satisfied with this. Now for the last part, I'm going to add a tiny bit of white to this and I'm going to brighten up some areas and add that snowy effect. So not a lot because white is very strong. So just add a little bit and then test it out and then see if you need to add a little bit more white. Um, and this is just going to go on the bottom here. So this is where my tree is going to end right here on the bottom. I want the bottom of my tree and the top of the tree is just going to be right up there. So just kind of figure out where your tree is going to go and how low on the canvas it's going to be. And this little part is going to be white right here so that it looks like the tree is sitting on a little bit of snow, like a little hill of snow. And then a little bit of um, like flurries in the back. We're just going to brighten it up a tiny bit. Yeah. 
Now, of course, you can make the background a little lighter. You can add a lot more snow. You can you can just have it blue completely. But you just remember to move really fast when you're doing this. So plan ahead, ahead or like make a little sketch in your sketchbook first um, because this paint really dries fast, um, like I said. So you have to kind of move really quickly if you want to blend it in nicely. But I do like this dry brush technique and this look that it gives me when the paint is a little bit dry and it just, just gives more texture to it. So I'm just doing this little hill area. I'm not, like I said, it's not very detailed. It's just a little abstract white snowy hill. Okay, so I think I'm gonna add a little bit of dark right here on the top because it just doesn't, doesn't look dark enough up there. And the top of the tree is gonna be up there and it's gonna have white branches. So I want it to pop out a lot more. So I'm just gonna darken up that area because once it dried, I'm just, I just wasn't satisfied. So I want to just fix it up a little bit. Um, I am totally finished with the background. Well, pretty much. <laughs> and I'm just going to go clean up these two things and we'll be back and start the tree. Okay. So I'm going to get some of my white out. If your water is really dirty from the background work and it's really blue, just go change it. Go grab another jar of water because um, you want that white to be nice and white. Now, like I said, um, I'm just going to do some swooshes with just white. So the same area that I did that little white hill, it's not white enough. So I'm going to add a bit more of this white and just make it pop out a lot more. So again, very loose. Um, keep in mind that this is supposed to be a little abstract. Um, and texture, keep in mind that texture. I'm drying up my brush, as you can see, after I, um, I wash off some of that white and then I dab it on my piece of paper, on my um, paper to dry it up a little bit so that I get more of that dry brush effect. So I get more of that, more of that texture. All right, so I think I'm going to be done with the background for now and we're going to move on to the tree. All right, so now we need to decide exactly where and how big our tree is going to be. So I'm going to measure because I already did this one before. So I'm just going to mark it with a little bit of charcoal or pencil or whatever you have. And I'm going to mark where the top of my tree is going to be and then where the bottom of my tree is going to be and then how wide the tree is going to be. So basically just draw a triangle in the shape of your tree, so a triangle, and think about how big you're going to make this tree because if you don't have those little guidelines, sometimes once you start drawing or painting those branches in, it can sometimes get a little out of hand and make your tree really fat or really skinny or just really weird looking. So make sure you kind of sketch out the shape of your tree. All right, so I'm gonna go grab my green and I will add a tiny bit of this dark blue to my um to my green just to darken it up a little bit because I am not using a bunch of greens. Like I said, I'm just using one green. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this blue to just make it a little bit darker. And we're just gonna start making those little branches. So we're just doing these little swoopy lines. So remember where your tree ends and where it begins and just kind of go in that direction. Make sure you're not going like all the way to the side. So make sure you kind of sketch in the main branches and then just kind of connect those two, the top and the bottom. All right, let me get a little bit closer so you guys can see exactly what these little guys look like. They're very easy. All right, so we're just starting at the bottom and going up very nice and soft. And don't do too many of these because we are gonna be adding different shades of green and yellow and other greens and blues and darker colors. So just do it very loosely and kind of flowing and just kind of soft. So don't, don't go too crazy and detailed on this, just little swoops of color. So make sure the other side of the tree goes in the other direction. And now that you have the main part of the tree kind of painted in, 
you can see how thick or how wide this tree is. So if you want to make it wider and fatter, go ahead. You can um, extend those little branches a little bit past your points where you drew them in. But um, this way, at least you have kind of a guide on where to take your tree and how far to go with it. So the branches in the middle are going to go kind of straight down and the branches on the sides and the bottoms are going at an angle. So make sure you remember those angles. They go in opposite or or <laughs> opposite directions. So the left side of the tree, the branches are going to swoop to the left and the right side of the tree, the branches are going to swoop to the right. So the middle is going to be a little bit straight but some of them are still going to go a little bit to each side. So just make sure they're not like super straight. Doesn't look like you use the ruler. Just make them a little bit curved. So now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to this green right here. So it depends what green you're using, um, what yellow you're using and what shade and just kind of what color green you're going to get. I'm using these two colors. So my green is um, it's a colder green. Um, if you're using a different green or a different blue and yellow to make your green, of, of course, you're going to get different results. So um, it just all depends on what colors you're using. Now we're going to decide on the light source. So my light source is coming from the top left corner of my canvas. So uh, my branches on the right side of my tree are not going to get very bright my bright branches, my yellow and um, green branches that I'm making right now are only going to stop like they're going to stop somewhere in the middle of the tree because then the other half of the tree is going to be hidden in the shadow. OK, because our light is coming from the left side. So I'm going to add a little bit of that um, Prussian blue just to get a little bit more variation in my greens. Or like I said, if you have other greens, you're welcome to just use them straight out of the tube. But I'm just trying to keep this simple. So I'm just using um, a green, a Prussian, a blue and a yellow. So this way I can make a dark green for that shadow side without having to grab another green. So I'm just adding that blue to my green and making it darker. All right, so now I'm going to add some white branches to add a little bit of pop of that highlight. But again, I'm going to keep it to the left side because that's where the um, the main bright light is coming from. So on this right side, like I said, I'm not adding too many of these highlights because it's in the shadow, but I will kind of dry my brush a little bit um, just to get more of that dry brush effect so that I don't have a lot of white on my brush, but that I still have a tiny bit. Um, so I'm just brushing it off or wiping it off a little bit just so I have a tiny bit of white on there just to add a little bit of that highlight, but not too much because it's in the shadow. So I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to start adding my little twinkly lights. Sorry for the glare here. It's really bright outside today. I'm, do I'm doing this right in front of the window and it's just a little bit too bright. But I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can see a little bit better um, what I'm doing with these lights. And these lights are super easy. I had my three year old do this um, the first time I originally painted this painting. I think she was three, maybe four at the time. But she really loved doing this part. So if you have little kids, you can get them to do this part with you because it's really fun for them. They're just going to be drawing little dots or painting little dots. So we're just paint starting with the white first. I'm just doing white um, dots kind of in random spots all over the tree. Now it depends if you want to do more or less. That's up to you. I'm not going to do too many because like I said, I sometimes add too much and then it's just too much. And and for the darker ones right here on the on the right side, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of my blue just so it's like baby blue. <laughs> so it's just a tiny bit bluer. Um, so it just looks like it's more in the shadow a little bit. So I'm just going to put these blue ones on the shadow side. So I'm going to let this dry a tiny bit. And now I'm going to add some yellow. Or I mean orange. So we're going to create a little bit more of a glow. 
So you don't need a lot of orange. Like I said, you just need a tiny little bit because you're only using it for these little flickering lights. And I'm going to take my smaller brush just so I can get smaller little areas in there. And I didn't let my color dry too much, um, so it's still kind of blending in there. So if you want to just let your white dry completely, um, you can just leave it for a little bit and then come back with the orange because my orange is kind of mixing with my white, which is fine too. So again, you don't have to be super precise. I'm just kind of dotting it in. I'm not even making sure that it's like super in the middle or anything like that as long as a little bit of orange is in there. All right, so now we're gonna grab our yellow to add just little tiny dots right in the middle. So this is the part that kids love to help out with because they just get to put little dots in. All right, so I'm gonna mix a little bit of this yellow with my green and just add some really bright green branches just to um, like I said just brighten it up a little bit more around um, where those little glowing lights are because those branches would be lighter all right so now we're gonna add those swirly white swishes everywhere in the background and on top of the tree just so it looks like this tree is kind of in the middle of a blizzard this is a little bit tricky and you can ruin your whole painting if you do this too much unless you want a giant blizzard with a lot of snow but just be very careful with this part and make sure your brush is kind of on the dry side so make sure your white is not like super coating your brush make sure it's a little bit dry on there so just very quickly kind of with your whole arm just swing your brush very gently but swing it on your canvas from side to side making these swoosh <laughs> strokes so the key is to have your brush dry but with some white on there but not too much because you don't want to totally ruin it maybe grab a piece of cardboard if you have like boxes laying around your house and try it on there because that way you can see the white on the cardboard and you can see how much to exactly wet your brush with that white paint so that it doesn't it's not too much. So now we're gonna make these snowflakes. So what I need you to do is either grab a paintbrush and another paintbrush or grab an old toothbrush, but no need for the toothbrush. I'm just gonna use my palette knife so that I don't hit my brush on my finger because it hurts. And then I'm gonna water down my white. So add a lot of water to your white and then just do this. Just hold it over your canvas and hit the brush over the other brush or pencil or whatever you got in your hand. And just make little splatters of snow. Now you can just use your finger to like flick it or like I said, toothbrush or anything. You can try out things. I've seen people do this with um, straws, like drinking straws, just don't drink the paint. Uh, but they dip it and then they like blow. So you can try all kinds of fun ways to make snow. Now I'm gonna just, while I have this white, I wanna brighten up my tree here on the side. Just add a little bit more of snow um, because it looks like it's in the blizzard, right? And there's not that much snow on it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. All right, guys, that's it. We are done with our beginner friendly tree. Now I want you to hang it up in your house or put it somewhere and take a photo of it and go tag me on Instagram. My handle is right below this video so you can go find me and I would tag me in there. So, cause I would love to see what you guys created and make it your own, make it a pink tree, a yellow tree, a red tree, add presents underneath it. Just add your own little Thing to it to make it um, more personal and why not gift it to somebody this Christmas it's the perfect present because you made it um, it's a DIY present you don't have to go shopping if you already have craft paints and canvases or even paper at home you can do this yourself and create your own very personalized present for somebody so that's it guys I will see you on my next video so make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any other art videos that I will have in the future. And I will be making more tutorial tutorials um, very soon. All right, see you guys later.